All right, so today's video is gonna be a little bit different. It's uh, not one of my usual camera videos, but uh, I do repairs on a lot of different kinds of electronics. So this is a, a repair for the, um, the HP Pioneer calculators, and that's uh, everything from the 22S and 27S, 32S uh, and 42S. I believe the other early ones have a different name, but uh, also the 10B and the 17B. Uh, it's an issue where basically the um, the foam that holds the uh, the keypad contact in place eventually just sort of squishes down or dust gets in between it and uh, you start to be able to lose function of some of the keys. So I'm, I'm going to be doing uh, a teardown of this just to show you how to get inside the calculator or how I do it. Um, also we're going to be adding some foam to reinforce the foam that's kind of flattened over the years. Um, I'm also going to be doing a memory upgrade on this calculator and upgrading it from 8 kilobytes of memory to 32 kilobytes of memory. Uh, my t process requires a hot air gun and a soldering iron. Um, there might be some other ways of doing it. Uh, so first things first, to get this calculator apart we just need to pop open these rivets and I just have a little drill here. I usually use a Dremel, but I don't know where I placed it. So we're just gonna go with the drill technique for now. And I'm just gonna drill a little bit down into each of these holes right here. First thing though, is we're gonna take out the batteries. Once we've got that, I'm just going to take off my little shavings and get them off to the side. And so from here, we can remove the little excess pieces of plastic that might still be down in there. And we should have a pretty easy access. Um, I usually use the razor blade for this and just pop open the top here. So just slide that in between the sides and you can see that that top piece has now become loose. We do have four more of these plastic rivets underneath the plastic side. I prefer not to take the, um, the top cover off, otherwise um, it just looks bad trying to glue it back down. So what I do is I just take this. If there's anything that's sort of stuck, we'll just go down along the sides and pop open. Uh, there are some little clips that run along the side there and that's just a, a way of freeing those up and then once I've got those clips free I want to keep pressure on the sides double check that my clips aren't stuck down in there still you can see that we're pretty good there so once I've gotten it to this point I'm going to just take it and just pull from one side you'll hear each one pop as it lets go. And that's that. So it's a it's a little brutish way of taking it apart, but again, if you're just gentle and <laughs> firm with doing it, you won't have any issues. So these are actually one of my favorite kind of boards just because of the way the PCB is. Um, it's just this beautiful gold board. It's just not something that you see in electronics anymore. It's just an open face. There's no solder mask on it. So it's a, just a completely raw exposed board. But once we've gotten it to this point, we can take this piece off. Um, a lot of people will tell you to kind of dremel these guys down and off. I prefer just to take a, uh, a clipper and just clip um, one side or two sides and it allow these uh, little pieces to actually push back into the calculator during reassembly. So I, uh, I wouldn't clip those off, I, I'd keep them. But for taking this apart now, we just have six of these little twist, uh, twist locking uh, pins. And so you have to make sure that you're paying attention to which way it's twisted, because if you twist it to open up uh, the locking tab, what you'll actually end up doing is just breaking it off and they're very, very difficult uh, to remedy that. So I can see with these ones here, they were twisted 
clockwise, so I'm going to be twisting them counterclockwise on the top, and um, on the bottom they were twisted counterclockwise, so I'll be twisting them clockwise on the bottom. And this will vary just depending on who is working on the calculator that day. So. Just be careful not to scratch any of the traces, um, and you want to try to get the uh, the little arms as flat as possible because otherwise, uh, you can see how they sort of have the two little arms on the side. They'll grab the board when you're trying to take it apart. So these are used for grounding, and they're also used uh, to keep the screen. Uh, contacts in place as well as the keyboard contacts in place. And again, it's fine if you scratch, you know, sort of the white area. There's nothing going on there. Just don't scratch any of the, uh, the contacts. All right, so once we've got that, I can just start on the bottom here and work this up a little bit. It's it's pretty stuck right now. It actually looks like this one has two little adhesive pads on the bottom there, which is pretty unusual. I, I don't think I've really seen that before on this. But just work up from one side, and that popped up pretty easy. Um, when I'm going to go back through and reassemble, I'm going to straighten out you know these tabs here and I'm going to clean off all of the zebra ribbon uh, contacts for the screen to make sure that we're getting a good connection. Um, I don't really recommend using any aggressive solvents like rubbing alcohol because you can take off the contacts. Uh, you can use it on this side of the calculator on the main board but I wouldn't do it on a, the other side. So. I'm just going to be using a little bit of lens cleaner, which is just what I have on hand. It works fine for this as well. And just clean up these contacts right here. All right, so I'm going to set that off to the side. Um, and again, what we're going to be focusing on here is this little uh, flex pad here that is pushed up by this rubber foam underneath it and I'm going to just take the easy way again I'm just going to be cutting out a piece of this foam and just attaching it this is just uh, some thin light sealing foam that will just give it a little bit of extra cushioning underneath where it's lost that foaminess I'm happy with that. So we're just going to pull up this flex right here. And you can just hold it at the top of your thumb. Try not to bend it too much. But when I do that, I'm going to have this taken off. And we're going to slide that underneath there. And this is just a single sided adhesive foam. a little bit sticky so which is good because I know it'll stay but makes it a little bit difficult to work with and you can do this um, on either side um, sometimes I take the foam up and I put the little pad part down so that it goes on the bottom side of that other times I do it this way it just depends on how I'm feeling that day Either way, it works fine. So you just have to make sure that when you're reinstalling the board that this ends up going flat down. Otherwise, you can actually pinch um, the flex cable, uh, whatever I guess, the contact board here 
uh, in the opposite direction and bend it down. It usually isn't a problem. It's pretty easy to remedy that. But what we're going to do here real quick is I'm just going to take a Q-tip and I'm going to clean off this uh, ribbon contact for the screen. Just making sure not to get any fibers or anything like that left over because it can end up causing the screen when you reinstall the board to not show properly or to have missing lines. So now that I've got that clean, I'm just going to set this upside down to the side so that way we're not getting any dust on it. And we're going to work on upgrading our board over here. Um, the chips used to upgrade these guys down here is actually the old chip from the HP 48G, just standard model, and it's just a 32 kilobyte chip, uh, just shown here. So I'm going to take my heat gun, we're going to remove this chip, and move it on over there. Alright, so now that we've got our chip removed, we can take this and move it off to the side. Replacing the chip just down here, um, you do need to notice depending on what kind of chip you're using, uh, where the um, the start point is. So we can see that we have it marked down here on the bottom right on our original chip that we took off. So here's our original chip here. We can see that we have a marking down here, same marking down there. So we're gonna put the chip in that same orientation. But again, first I'm going to take a razor blade, you can take a Dremel or anything else that you want and just cut that trace down here to that jumper pad. And once we have that removed, we're going to get this uh, new chip installed right here. I'm going to put a little bit of flux down first. Typically you just want to get one leg first and then once you have that leg you can kind of get everything else lined around that. So I'm just going to get a little bit of solder here and we're just going to start up top and work our way down. And again you want to try to be careful about a lot of the, um, the traces here just because all of this is unmasked. So you can end up getting a lot of solder on bridges that you don't intend on. And just because I'm doing it this way, I'm going to push down on the, uh, the pins just a little bit to make sure that they're making good contact with the board. Looks like we're good on that side. I'm gonna flip it over and get started on this side now. And you don't need to put a ton of force on the pins once they start heating up and soldering down. Um, they'll move down pretty easily. And you can always do the heat gun method, um, the reflow to get these chips back on if you want to do it that way. I just prefer to add as little uh, direct heat as I can. Um, it is possible to use the hand iron to remove the chip, but I uh, 
It's not really my preferred method. All right, it looks like everything's good there now. I'm just going to add that little solder blob now between this point there. And so I'll bring that up here. So over here again, those little contact is where I added that solder blob in. And I'm just gonna take a little bit of rubbing alcohol on a Q-tip and clean up that flux that we left behind. And then I'm just gonna quickly inspect to make sure I don't have any bridges. Um, as again, it's quite easy to do because of a, the lack of masking on it. I'm just going to check my solder joints, make sure they all look good. Yep, everything looks good to me. So, all cleaned up. Now the board should be ready to be reassembled back into the uh, calculator. And so, now that we've got that, I uh, want to just do a double check on this side, make sure everything's clean as well as, you know, on the, the calculator side of things. So when I do the reassembly, I like to have the board side down um, instead of up because that way if there's any pieces of fiberglass from the board, they're going out this way instead of falling down in between the contact pads and stuff. So we're just going to take this and line it up on the bottom side first that way uh, it's kind of angled up and open like that. That way the, um, the keypad ribbon uh, is more likely to go on correctly. So we're gonna get those three bottom ones lined up there. And again, I like to hold it upside down just to keep out any little bits of dust that might fall in. And so once we have it there, I can take a peek in on the side, just through the side right there to make sure that we're flat. And if it looks like I'm not, I can just take a small screwdriver or something else and just sort of poke it down into that um, hole and push the ribbon up until I feel like it's uh, making good contact there. And so once I have that done there, I can actually test the calculator like this. Um, for this, I'm just going to be putting down uh, the bottom right and the top left tab. And we're going to test that out now and see if that gives us uh, what we're looking for here. So we can see we have a memory clear. Uh, we're not all the way there just because uh, we still need to put these tabs back down. And we can see we've got our full screen there. I'm going to get this last tab put into position. And you don't need to go crazy. Um, nothing more than uh, 180 degrees is necessary. If you do any more than that, you risk breaking the tabs off. Um, even around uh, 90 to 120 degrees is good. So after we've done that, um, we'll do a self-test here in a second. Once we have the back on, we can't do it until we have the speaker hooked back up. Um, but down here, uh, we're going to check the memory real quick. So I'm going to adjust the screen brightness until we have a good clear image. Uh, go to catalog. So we'll hit the second button here, catalog, and then memory up here on the top. And we can see that we have 31, 553, you know, 32 kilobytes of memory available, which is a huge upgrade over the standard 8 kilobytes that you get with the HP 42S. So again, I'm going to show you this here. Um, I typically just clip off a little bit of the plastic just on uh, a couple sides so that there's still something left there. Um, typically, sort of like a triangle works best, I've found. Again, that'll get pushed back in 
when we reassemble this. So I'm going to take the batteries out here real quick. I'm going to just reassemble this here now. And we're just going to push right here on the back and with our thumbs and go from one side to the other and we'll have that bottom area locked back in. And it's strong enough, you know, that it's going to hold. You're not going to have to worry about the calculator coming apart. There are also the side clips there that keep the calculator together. Um, for the top up here, what you can either do is, since you now have an open hole, you can either place screws in there, you can use super glue as long as you're super careful. If you do super glue, make sure to place it upside down. Any glue getting inside the uh, calculator can um, ruin it. But we're going to put the batteries in here real quick and do a self test and check out that keyboard. Okay, so we're just going to be doing a quick keyboard self test here. And then, uh, show that all the keys are functioning again. So that's pretty much it. Um, this repair and upgrade will give you uh, more functionality out of your calculator. Again, um, you're going to be looking for the 32 kilobyte uh, memory modules, but again, I'll show you real quick here that we do have 32 kilobytes of memory, which is a very cool upgrade. Um, if you're into these kind of calculators. Uh, so that's pretty much it for this one. Um, just a nice upgrade that if you're uh, already doing the keyboard repair and you have a little bit of soldering skills, this is something that you'd be able to uh, do yourself. But uh, hopefully this was useful for you. Um, that's all for this one. Have a good one.